we're live. <laughs> the, the countdown ended and we are completely live. So Can fun. you hear me? And I think we're good. Let's just give people a little bit of time to catch up. And I'm definitely going to just fix my story there so that we are all on time and in place. How's your weather in Singapore, Laura? Go gorgeous. It's been a gorgeous sunny day, hot and sweaty as usual. <laughs> oh, gosh, I can imagine. Well, spring has been quite... Spring has been quite... Say, okay, it it's looks, like, you're yeah, looking a bit wrapped up. It's been cold. It's been pretty That's cold. Nice. So, yes. Okay, we're definitely, we're live, people can hear us, we've got some visuals, which is wonderful. Welcome Tanya, Tanya Reeves is following the conversation, so that's great. Um, Laurie, yes, no, spring in Cape Town hasn't quite landed. We'll have one day of good weather and then three days of cold and the rain is still coming. Mm. There's always the sneaky ones in September, aren't there? Time. Yes, remember exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I had a little bit of sound, it sounded like a little bit of background noise, but I think we're all good. And welcome to everyone. Okay. Kate's here. Mm. Hello, Kate. Tabo, Tabo's here watching us. Edwina, hello, Edwina. Madge, Madge, you're here. Thank you so <laughs> much for joining us. It's so amazing. I mean, I just, I, I'm still trying to get over the fact of the fax machine. I mean, remember back in the day <laughs> when you would send a piece of paper to somebody and <laughs> you'd still end up with a piece of paper and they would get it on the other side. This to me is just incredible. I just so love one, this third party StreamYard app that allows us hmm. to be in different places at once. We're currently going live on LinkedIn. Hello, Lissy Barner, you're joining us. Great. <laughs> We're, 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 we're using StreamYard to go live on LinkedIn. And at the same time, simultaneously, we're going live on Facebook. So it's just um, one of those things that, you know, amazing, incredible. But greetings to everybody. And most importantly, to our esteemed guest, Laura. Thank you for being Thank here. You. So just oh, thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh -huh. I'm you really honored. How we met because I think that's that in itself is a story. <laughs> and for everybody who's listening now on the live, and for people who'll be catching this on the replay, just to clarify one thing: Laura is actually not one of my clients. I've not worked <laughs> with Laura at all, but we met serendipit serendipitously, yes. and. Um, what I love about Laura is the way that she has kind of found her calling in the most unconventional, she beat convention to find her calling, let's put it that way. Um, and yeah, you know, what is the career revolution? Well, I decided to create this series, Saturday series of talking to people who have not been my clients because it just, that would have felt a bit I don't know, weird. So talking to people <laughs> who have found their calling through unconventional ways in their own regard, because what is the career revolution? Well, the career revolution is that thing that happens to all of us. It's uh, evolution and then a revolution. It's something that starts to send us messages. It's something that starts to bug us. It's a nail that we start sitting on that at some point along the trajectory of our career, we kind of want to just take a pause and go, what am I doing? What's it all for? Is this where is this where I'm going to end up? Is there anything more that I can do? And how can I get it? So my definition of the career revolution is that it happens to all of us. It's within us. It's not an external thing. It's not something that the great, you know, resignation and the, the reset. And the, I mean, it's none of that. It's something that's deeply personal and it happens to all of us. And the work that I've been doing for the past 10 years is all about helping people get the clarity that they need within their career to be able to move out and stand in the sunshine of their career in whatever form that might be. And yet here we are in, in, in this world, in, in these amazing careers now, and this continues to play out. We, we continue to have a sense and a need and a desire to want more and do more. 
So the career revolution to me is this internal pull. Sometimes it comes externally, retrenchments, restructure, um, you know, corporate, schmorprit mixings and so forth and, and change ups. But more than often it comes internally. And we're going to dig deep with Laura today to understand how that internal played out and what she, what steps she took. Sanjay is here from India. Fantastic. Don't you just love it? <laughs> Laura's in Singapore. I'm in Cape Town. We've got a bunch mm -hmm. of people from Singapore, a bunch of people from South Africa, from India, and all around the world. So welcome, 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 welcome. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Laura, I'm going to let you tell us, tell everyone how we met. And ah. then we're going to go into a couple of questions. And then they're definitely going to be questions for the um, everyone who's here watching us live. So how did we meet, Laura, last so, month? It's actually quite funny. Yeah, last month. Um, so SICAS, the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, every August does a Women in Leadership series. And um, with me needing CPD hours, even though I'm not in <laughs> in like um, a chartered accounting role anymore, I always sign up to it because there's often very um, inspiring speakers. And I got onto your webinar that you had. And as I was sitting there listening to how you were inspiring people through a career revolution, if you're feeling friction, how do you go through it? How do you change and and look at the strategy of, of changing careers. I mean, um, I literally just sat there going, yes, that's I did that. Oh, oh, I did that. And everything you said just really resonated with me personally. I was like, oh, oh, I've been on this journey and she's speaking my language. And I think my, what, the most interesting part of it for me was we'd never met before. And I really liked how you were saying it in quite a, a concise way for accountants to understand even though i'm no longer an accountant like no longer in that role it was a just the way you articulated this inner journey and um pivoting careers it resonated with me 100 percent. so then i actually just posted on linkedin going wow so inspired and i think it was actually sponsored by the bank i used to work for in south africa yes, investing, uh, yeah, yes. Investing, yeah and um and then connected with you via linkedin just saying i was so inspired and what an amazing amazing webinar it was and um that's how we got chatting that's how we got chatting so there's <laughs> there's so much there that i want to talk about because i just loved the way that you took action and um, i mean thank you for the nice things that you said about the talk but I, I i spent hours preparing that because it was such an honor to be invited by psyka firstly i didn't for a minute you know um underestimate the fact that what I was going to be saying was going to be landing with qualified chartered accountants who'd climbed the corporate ladder, who kind of had um, done what they were told to do, work hard, get, you know, get a good qualification, work hard and climb the corporate ladder. And here I was going to come in at their request and talk about, well, is this, how's that working for you? Now there's a career revolution. So let's all start changing things up. So I really spent a lot of time preparing the message so that one, it would be useful. It was a workshop style keynote, but um, two, that it wouldn't alienate the, the very audience that I was presenting to. So um, th there was that. And, but And actually the interesting thing, Alicia, on it, I was watching the chats as they were coming and I kept going, oh my gosh, yes. And the number of people that were going, oh yes, I'm, I'm, I'm in this predicament at the moment. This is how I feel. I mean, everything you said, there were people at different levels of their career revolution, even some yeah. at the at the very fearful start, who were just going, "Oh yes, you, yes, this feels right. This is this is what you know you've been saying to me. You know, like this is what I've been saying to myself." They had yes. so it, you really did you you hit the nail on the head with so many people at different levels of their career. Well, thank you, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. um, it 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 was a. It, it, it was a great, great honor, but so strange to be talking to 321 people around the world, but not actually speaking to them in a sense. Um, but let's get into you. We're, I'm going to come back to how you reached out and we connected because I love that. And it's so much of what I teach in terms of finding people across, you know, across the world and, and connecting with them. When there's a, when somebody, when something resonates, reach out and say, let's talk. And here we are. You reached out and here we are talking and <laughs> going live. So thanks for your action taking, Laura. Pleasure, but, pleasure. So you're a qualified CA. 
you yes, did yes. You, you did the articles route. You you did the went, articles. You did the you did it all. You got the job at Investec yep. and you were working yep. hard. Which was which what? was always, you know, the, the dream bank the to work at for me. Yeah, it was. It was Tell um, us and about I was what, happened. what was the moment? Uh, like, was it was it a building moment? Was it a sudden what like, what happened? How did it I all actually, I think a bit of both. Um, I actually, in, in the mindfulness classes I teach at the moment, now changing, I, I do talk about, you know, either we have this, like, this ripple of friction or we have a big bang moment. And I feel like mm. I actually had both. Um, even during varsity, at the end of my, just before I did my honours year, I started going, mm, is this really for me? No, 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 I've got this far and, and, and this is what I need to keep doing. Put my head down, carried on. A uh, few times during my career, I, I started going, oh, but I'm quite a creative person. Is this really for me? Uh, okay, so and I'm going to interrupt. Of, sorry. Yes. I'm going to uh, interrupt. Did it have, you said big bang moment and, sl mm. and, and, and sort of ripple mm. effect, but mm. was it because you were unhappy in the work? you know was it about the was the external was the work just not great or were you thinking this because i remember um, you know, i think mm. it's like anyone listening to us can say well you know you, you didn't have a great job so you decided you wanted to change up but well really i think this, well this is exactly it i constantly went oh it must be the company i work for or it must be the job type or it must be the house i'm living in so let me move <laughs> or <laughs> constantly changing my external world and yet once the novelty wore off I went oh, oh I still feel like that and it was okay. then when the big bang moment happened I ignored a few mini bang moments and then I did have a big bang moment I um left left corporate left banking went into agriculture and it was a family business and unfortunately actually it brought up a lot of uh emotional and uh inner work for me during that time and it started making me realize that I needed to actually look at my my own like, like look at myself the only thing we can we have control over is our own minds and how we can actually change things in our situation you can't control mm -hmm. anything else and and the biggest thing over my journey was my mental health deteriorated over and over the years as I was in um in the banking industry and i just think it wasn't for me i felt stifled and i didn't realize it at the time but in hindsight now i can see i'm i i didn't feel like i was living my my fullest potential and there but were there were times when I went, there's got to be more than this but you could have and I, i'm going to be the like oh, come on laura you could have changed industry like ba all right banking mm. wasn't for you you were you were mm. in um I can say in best I mean, yeah, you, that you were with them. <laughs> and great, and to be honest, probably the best, change, the best I mean, you worked for. They were amazing. Like I couldn't, I couldn't have, have asked for a better employer. But I wasn't happy within myself. Okay, so so the and and I think that's the place that I want to go to because yeah. that's what we hear so often, what I hear so often, and what is so hard to deal with. Particularly, I think, not to be gender specific, because we all have a career revolution taking place within mm -hmm. us. But for women, it's different somehow, because is it because we're able to perhaps um, put others' needs first, possibly? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, this is not a, the, the, this is not this, this is not that discussion. But <laughs> I think the, the question that I'm, I, I want to go to is, you you things were different you knew you weren't happy but mm -hmm. you could have changed industries all right you did try that you moved from corporate banking mm -hmm. and then you went into family farm business yeah and then that in itself you were still using your qualification you, yeah. you were running the finances of the farm mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there we go how like was it just you did you always have the sense of awareness was it something that you know you were brought up with that you can strive for more and have more was it a or, or, like help me understand where okay. the, the ripple of friction started i think that's it so, and it is it's the friction so i definitely have always had supportive parents of you can do anything you want um and very supportive in that way although my dad has always been very much like understanding those kind of jobs 
are the ones to stick to, whether it's accounting or doctors or, you know, the ones that okay. make sense to, to the, his generation. Okay, but so get a good more, qualification and use your degree. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, the job must make sense. So there was definitely that element, but it got to a stage where I was going, what, who am I doing this for? What is the benefit? Like, it... It, the friction was about like I've got to help more people. I felt very self-absorbed, very, and to be honest, I was, and I was in a very mm. unhappy place. I was tightly wound. My anxiety and my depression was through the roof, mm. and I've got to a stage just going like there's got to be more to life. I was literally oh, living from oh, one oh. holiday holiday to the next because those were the like travel was my thing, and it was the only. Mm. I mean, I still love it, but it was the only. I, I was like, I can't live in this every day being so unhappy and mm. and it had to do with this like why am i here like what is my purpose in this world and what lights and, and this is where i think the friction comes in is like i just felt dead inside and i went and did what? you reach sorry hmm? you, 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 yes i mean it was just a, a feeling of such it was affecting your mental health it was affecting your physical yes. health it was affecting Completely. your performance at work it was everything and, that's, was and, and in fact actually even physical health i um i did i ended up struggling with digestive issues and uh, a number of different things and i really started going like like my whole life was out of balance and particularly interesting you say like women start thinking this but i definitely think i was more in my masculine energy going, you know, got to do things. You know, and and mm. I definitely think we have a, we need to have the perfect balance between the, the, the two of them, every, everyone, men and women. And I was completely mis, like out of alignment with my, myself and what resonated with me. Did you look across the corridor, across industry, within your kind of article colleague pool? Mm. Did you look at other CAs and see them striving and flying in their career did you look at them and go oh, what's wrong with me what's what have they got how did they get it right yeah. were you sort of yes. looking into the industry were you leaning into your qualification going who can help me you know because you yeah. you identified as banking and then you had to, you you change that and then the entrepreneur you know the, the the agriculture the family business also was the same and so although in fact i even did do a little stint at a um uh i can't remember what they were called Anyway, at another industry, more Medical. like in the, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, didn't last long because I realised I went, I, I went. Well, nothing's changed. It's still me, in, in, you know, doing this. And and it's not necessarily. I think it came down to the fact that I mean, when you think about what I do now, it's I started really going deep about looking into the my inner world. What what brings me passion? What brings me energy? What depletes my energy? What, when am I a really nasty and horrible person? When am I a really great and happy person to be around? Really going deep. And it started out with just finally stopping and finding some stillness to actually just go, okay, just hold on, stop chasing. It was, because for me, it was, yes, I looked at all the industries, but when I finally stopped looking, mm. and stopped looking at what if I try this? What if I try this? What if I try this? When I actually mm. just stopped it all, took a deep breath and went, I'm actually going to take a sabbatical. What? And I even tried things actually just by the way, while I was always on my career of um, like in, in finance, I was always either teaching dance, uh, like somatic dance called Nia, or I was teaching yoga and meditation alongside. So you had a career. very full afterlife, like the job was yes. the job. And then exactly. after the job, all the other stuff started happening that gave and, you energy that you lived for. Yes. And even I started a novelty cake business because I'm like, I'm so creative. And it was something I was then coming back from the office, seven o'clock, working, baking cakes until 11 a.m., waking up at 4 a.m. to do it. But those are the things I love. They drove me. But... Mm. But my eight to five or whatever it was, de everything else depleted my energy. So I was just mm. running on, I was, to be honest, burnt out adrenaline. Um, running yourself down into the, the ground, but you were doing what you thought you had to do, which was yes. work hard, you know, to keep following, climbing the ladder. And you had a and successful career, you know. Yes, look, yes. Anyone outside looking in would have gone, well, there's Laura, got, you know, she's she's going, everything's, she's got it. You know, maybe there were other got people looking at you going, what have you got? How did you figure it out when they're not yet? Yeah. Yet you didn't have it. 
Tell us no. about the time because you, you reached out to recruiters. You had this and you were like, well, let's change uh -huh. up. Let's see. And you were sort of dying on the inside with the work, living this outside life of um, amazing things that were keeping you alive. And in the process, yeah. you were going to recruit. What, what was their response? What was happening there? It, you know, It was actually so interesting because it was, a, it was at a time when I had really started veering into doing a lot more yoga retreats and um, taking people on meditation. Uh, journeys teaching yoga mm. and financially I needed to uh, we basically my husband and I decided like we both needed to look for new jobs so I started approaching banks again and um, yeah basically even comic you know being in commerce and yeah basically financial manager roles and every every single interview I sat in I could hear this in a dialogue of me going you're just telling them what they want to hear I felt, like I said, I felt dead inside. I literally just could see my mouth moving and there was nothing coming from from the depths of, of, of any realness or authenticity. And I think that I kept coming back from these and obviously never got the jobs. And I went, oh, what's wrong with me? And that didn't help with my negative self-belief. And mm. But the interesting thing was I just went, I'm feeling so inauthentic. I am telling them what they need to hear, but none of it, none of it actually I don't even believe it, so why would they believe it in an interview? And <laughs> you you had this qualification, you had yes. you had a career using your qualification, you'd mm. spend time, effort, money, everything, I mean, to you know, to get to where you are with your those four letters, two letters and, yes. and, and two letters behind your name is, is, is hard effort and work and yeah. it wasn't, you know, it it just that I think um that's such a big takeaway for me in everybody's career revolution is it doesn't actually matter about how highly skilled you are. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. When you've moved away from the work that you're doing and you know that your revolution has started within you and you yeah. can't keep doing this, everything changes. You can't mm -hmm. pretend, you can't, you can only fake it for so long and then your mental health, your energy, things are going to start. Yeah you know, coming up. And, and that to me is so interesting because over the years, how many times have I spoken to people who perhaps are um, really skilled, but they might not have this, you know, big qualification behind their name and they feel like they need to get the qualification yeah. in order to perhaps keep pushing at the thing that's not quite working rather than pausing, stopping and listening to their inner calling and going out and exploring that. And I think it's those are the people that I love working with the most. Because and actually, Alicia, on that, just sorry to interrupt, on that, yes. it's got so much to do with our identity. Uh, for ages, in fact, up until the beginning of this year, whenever anyone, even since leaving corporate, leaving finance, people would say to me, what do you do? I, went, I would go, oh, I, am a, I was a chartered accountant, but now I do blah, blah, blah. And I had to yeah. always just, oh, let me just justify my profession and this identity and this label so you can take me seriously. And now I do a whole bunch of weird and fun and hippie sh stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, I was so, so fixated and attached to this label of CASA. And I feel liberated yeah. now that I've gone, well, yes, it is. It's part of my, I mean, I still am. And it's, stand, it's, it's standing, still standing me well in good stead and running new businesses. Yeah, but it's not it's not me. It's not my identity. It's not that is Laura. Yeah, yeah, no. and that that's the, that's the work. The work is honoring yourself and yes. the disconnect. Madge, you're absolutely right. We get completely disconnected from our qualification. Mm -hmm. Crystal is talking about showing up authentically. Mimi, yes, this is, is agreeing with you, Laura. The masculine energy is a definite symptom. Um, so it's about the Honoring who we really are and making no excuses for that, even though that might mean moving away from the qualification, the corporate ladder, the career, everything that we had worked towards, because it comes to a point where there's so much on the line. Like, let's just talk a little bit about why people don't make the move that you then made. Like it, it sounds to me and, and your story is so amazing and inspiring because of, you got to a point where you're like, it's my health. It's, you know, it's it's my 
it's me or it's this damn job. It's like, who's going to win? <laughs> you know? yeah. like, yeah. And I wasn't, uh, to be honest, I wasn't a nice person. So it was affecting my relationships and my friendships. Yeah. Yeah. So that was another thing. I was like, like, this isn't worth it. Yeah. It's not so I it. think that's also something that really does, um, it, it, it's a hard transition to make. Okay, I can feel the friction. I can do stuff outside of my hourly job. <laughs> you know, I'll, yeah. I, I can do stuff on the weekend. I can have all, that gives me energy, that inspires me, that keeps me alive, that keeps me going. I can just do the stuff that I need to do, kind of, you know, grin and bear it while it's putting money on the table, or putting food on the table, or it's moving us forward. And you know, you, you go from holiday to holiday, but mm. then there comes a point where, in, in your case, as we just said, where it's like you, you can't keep doing this anymore because you are so disconnected from who you are, from the life, from your source work, that yes. something inside of you, that revolution is just exploding and it's messy. And, there, you know, there's going to be blood on the dance floor if we don't attend to it and do something with it. But it's fear. Uh, I Yes, fear. and I was going I, to say, I, I, can't can't give up my fear. I, call it. I can't give this all up now. And, um, and I also it's think what other people think. It's everyone's going to say. Sorry. Yeah, go. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say, you also can't be scared of the blood on the dance floor. It's actually having the courage to go, okay, this, this transition is going to be messy. I am going to stand there and look at my dark parts with the flashlight, look at the light parts. This is going to be messy. I need to essentially unpick myself and really go deep and find out what makes me tick and it is it's that is where this i actually think if we get over the fear of getting the inner work done and finding out what ignites us it, here yeah. here not here really yeah. finding out what ignites us who, you, who are we who who are you yes. like, not yes. what you do but who are you no. what really no. everything about that yeah. so back to you and your particular journey and yeah. So you then there was this like this rippling friction and then a sudden like there is no way I can't keep doing this. Um, yeah. you know, trying to re-enter back to the degree, back to the qualification, mm -hmm. back to the skills life. You were just getting a hard no all the time. You could <laughs> feel it within you, it was just nothing was working. And then what happened? You started doing this inner work. You like Yes, you and, and to be to be honest, I just First of all, it was just, I just stopped. <laughs> I just okay. found a place to be still and stopped chasing things mm. on the external. And mm. the big thing was, uh, um, after one interview, I came home and I said to my husband, I said, I can't do this and I need the space to. So I'm very grateful that he said, okay, well, why don't, like, if sabbatical. we really are, mm. yeah, take a sabbatical for the rest of this year. If we really, we, we can, we can, we can make it work. And I did, I just, finally found stillness and by going into stillness it was it was messy I won't lie I saw a really mm. amazing psychologist and I remember actually saying to her oh but I could do this because I'm a yoga teacher and I could do cakes and I do this and I could do this and I love teaching dance mm. and, da, 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 da. and I remember still, she actually wrote you I was were still, looking I was for the like if I'm not no, the CA like, what am I oh, next no, what's my next exactly what is title? my label? where's the box where do I fit in yes okay. yes and she literally wrote on a piece of paper, trust and allow, and held it up to me. And I went, oh. <laughs> and I'm not a big, you know, like, I don't, I'm like, practical, I need answers. And I did, I started really, I mean, I always taught yoga, always taught these things, but I really started using those tools. And I um, started learning proper mindfulness meditation and actually became a mindfulness meditation um, facilitator. And I went, oh, wow, this world that I know of, of, meditation and yoga has this scientific background that actually speaks to my, my accounting side of my brain. And I went, oh, wow, look at this. Like these things can get married, you know, mm. but I spent, I did different courses and I, and I also just, I spent time. I saw a psychologist. I spent time doing, um, using alternative methods of healing like Reiki and kinesiology. I really took time out to go on my own journey. I spent two 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 months in India traveling on my own, oh. um, India and Nepal. Yeah, and I I really really took the time out to also just get my adrenal my adrenals um, back up, you know. And I was mm. I was fortunate because I had someone backing me, which was really you know I don't think we all have that. Um, so I'm very very grateful for that. But we can yeah. still yeah. It's it's more the point is more about I stopped looking 
and I actually started looking here and I just mm. stopped trying to, I started actually going, okay, but what makes me tick? And, mm. and noticing when are the things that light up my life? When do I really light up when I dance, when I do my meditation, when I'm teaching people, when I'm inspiring people? What are the mm. things that actually light me up and, and then rejuvenate me rather than deplete me? And Laura, you, you got to the, the, like, you got to the end where you were exhausted. There was, you, 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 there was not much that you could give anybody. And then you knew this, that was like the, the shift and the change. So. Yeah. And I do, th I do, we do need that. We, unfortunately, some of us maybe listen to listen or a little bit more aware and listen as things are going, we're listening to the little bits of friction. I needed a, a bit of a, a big bang to actually go, okay, enough is enough. To, to add, so, and I mean, I think sometimes what is that, you know, what, what, what is it about the human condition that sometimes we do need to kind of fall down, scrape our nose, get up and go, aha, now we are going to yeah. be able to sort of, um, change. I just want to read yeah. some of the comments. Um, they've been great. Candy's joining us, Candy and Gula, all the way from Namibia. Kind of conversation we need more of in society. Absolutely. Yes. Insightful and authentic. Um, mm -hmm. Brazil, yes. Kudos to Laura for facing the fear and taking the risk to find you. So, I mean, anybody hearing this story who is in a point of thinking, something sounds like that could be me, but mm, no, you know, I'm, I'm different, or I'm, I'm not going to. It's not going to get that far. Or I'm not. It's not going to be that bad. Or I'm not going to go. And well, I'm not Laura, so that's you know, that's her story. Anybody hearing this? I think what I would want the biggest message to be coming out of this discussion. I mean, it's your unique story, your amazing um, inspiration and, and how you went. We've got so much to talk about further, but I, I think perhaps it's the permission that you don't, does like if it's not working for you, stop and take a look around and try and find something that is. I mean, it's just that simple message in a way. But uh, and I think I think this is what's so pertinent about well, what I, I, I've gathered, what you do, Lucia, is is you start on the the inner work first, and and I think that this is what resonated when you were talking about. We've got to do look inside first, and then how you coach people to then start looking, getting to getting to the growing your business, everything else. Mm. But I love the fact that you start. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what yeah. resonates because I'm like, I'm like, oh, well, that is how it finally worked for me. And I and so hearing you say it when we were on that webinar, I went, mm. oh, yeah, someone can tell other people and help other people guide them to start doing that. that and then, that's it. And then yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So not everybody's able to, not everybody feels the sense of um extreme frustration that they then have to stop and take a year off. Sometimes it's a slow niggle and this isn't right and something can change and, and what can I do? Um, sometimes it's drastic, as I said. I mean, you know, the, we're here talking about the career revolution. What is the career revolution? Well, it's, it's something that happens to all of us within us. Um, it's about discovering who we really are. And it's not, Laura, it's not about trajectory and career it's not about time frame within career it's not about gender it's not it's not about any of that it's about the feeling that we get when we focus on what makes us happy within our work and what doesn't and it's almost like that to me is the sort of the 101 the audit how much of the work that you do currently to anybody listening and anyone that feels like this could be where they might be heading how much of the work that you're doing currently feels light, energetic, and do you enjoy it? There's stuff you have to do, but then there's stuff that you choose to do. Looking at both of those, what is it that feeds you? What, what is it? And if you can't pull up enough yeses, if there isn't a long enough list, the work isn't your source work. That and, and it's okay to change it and go and find it somewhere else. So, you know, yeah, that's the the you know, the the train and, and the thought. But I want to, um, a couple of things. We, we've gone into half an hour, which is fantastic. I want to come back to 
more about you and what you've done. And I want you to share and tell us about the dance of the hummingbird because um, I love, just just love that, that thought and that analogy. And then I also want to put out any question to you know anybody that has specific questions that they might want to ask Laura. But I'm gonna go loop back to, you took the time out. You had somebody who was backing you. You, as you said, you were you were able to take a sabbatical mm -hmm. and rethink and regroup and just go to the things that supported you. Your physical health was on the line, your mental health was on the line, and you needed to build up your resources. And it was in this stage and space that you started to feel, well, it was because everything ha had, had was wrong before and broken, mm -hmm. there was no going back. What if yes. it wasn't so completely broken and then an amazing come and do this for us with your qualification, Laura? Like, how, what if somebody really put together a good offer that made you go, well, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I should try this again. Like, talk to me, like, explain to me how it was such a breakwater for you. It was like there was no going back. You shut the door and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, actually just looking at what, what Kate um, has said, it's that inner pilgrimage, you know, of, mm. I think the no going back was what she's just said here, of being service to the world. I started going, mm. my journey can help people. And I even realized, like, I actually, a, a big, big thing, part of it was a school friend of mine reached out to me and said, Laura, I'm really struggling with my mental health. I know you have had before what like please can you help me and I mean I wasn't qualified I said well are you seeing a psychologist all of these sort of things but just being supportive to her I went this this is what's feeding me I'm helping other people mm. from what I have learned and from my own journey and then through my, my mindfulness meditation um facilitation mm. everything else but it it's it came down to going I, like I need to I need to be able to give back and how am I going to do it and how and and I think that's where I just yeah the friction just got too much and mm. um, that that's where it got to and it got to the softening of going well, like what what am I really here to do mm. and and that and, and I'm love just actually about to mm. sorry Karen I no you go <laughs> I love that there was this calling to serve it was like <gasps> it, it the, the the calling within you was like, I, I can help people because somebody's been down the same road and I can tell them how not to fall over so badly. Yeah. You know, there was yeah. that that desire um, calling within you. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about the dance of the hummingbird. Okay. So, um, so it actually started with just before my trip. So I'd already done a mindfulness meditation training and I was like, okay, this is definitely, I want to teach mindfulness meditation back into corporates, which is something I do do because I'm so passionate about bringing awareness and present moment awareness and mental health into the corporate world because of what I had been through. What you'd experience. But part of it what yeah, part of it was I actually started just before my trip to India, I started writing a blog called The Search of the Hummingbird. And the reason the hummingbird resonated with me so well is I listened to a podcast between Elizabeth Gilbert and Oprah. And she, and Elizabeth Gilbert was talking about jackhammers who would find a purpose and they just go, 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 go. And I thought, and she just said how some people resonate with that. She said, and she's realized that other people, so hers, Elizabeth Gilbert, writer for the rest of her life. That is, she knows that's it. Yes. She spoke about people that are hummingbirds. And she said, basically, they taste a bit of this, they try a bit of this, they do this, and they share the sweet nectar of life from one flower to the other. And I went, oh, I'm normal. That's me. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay that I don't have one thing that I love. I'm, I'm creative and I love this and I love that. And I'm always trying new things and it's okay. It's not, it doesn't make me a failure that I stop something and try something new. That it's it's okay, I'm a hummingbird. And I, I felt such relief. And this was just before my trip to India. And so I called my my blog The Search of the Hummingbird. And I wrote purely just ramblings of my trip in the search of the hummingbird. And at the end of it, um, we were actually about to move to Singapore and I started going, what? why was it why was it a search because what you're searching for this beautiful quote actually um about india and it says what are you searching for mm -hmm. what whatever it is is within you but india might bring it out and i do think like for me it was 
I'd stopped searching and I'd finally just started looking within. And mm. for me, dance has always been, dance and movement have always been one of my yeah. languages. It's my medicine. Oh, your um, bomb, your go-to, your happy. Your... Yes, yes. It's my release. It's my sharing of connection with people. It's There's so much to it. And so then I changed the name to the dance of the hummingbird. And that is what actually the business is, um, is called, you know, is, is called here in Singapore. And that is now... Well, I have two things. So one is is all about uh, mindfulness meditation and especially um, so coaching one on one, but also teaching people within corporates, bringing in that masculine and feminine energy into the into the workplace and how to bring about awareness and consciousness into the workplace. Uh, and then I do beautiful cacao ceremonies, which are very sacred and special. And within that, I bring in movement and dance. And then the dance part is also I. Um, so I'm a Secret Sunrise facilitator. I know some of the South Africans might know about Secret Sunrise. It mm. um, started in South Africa. And actually, when I was moving to Singapore, I went, oh, I'm going to miss this so much. Like, yeah. it's such a beautiful way of connecting. And so, like, I had just found, like, I'd met a lot of, you know, beautiful people as part of my tribe. And I went, oh, oh I'm going to miss this so much. We moved to Singapore. And I went, well, why don't I start it here? It isn't here. So I have founded Secret Sunrise Singapore and launched it in February this year. And it has taken off. It's... And I mean, it is, again, it's just the dance of life and sharing joy with more and more people over the world. And um, it's, I mean, we just need connection now more than ever after the last two years that we've had. And and so my whole thing of the dance of the hummingbird is just let me dance from one flower to one flower to another, sharing the sweetness of life and let me help you find your dance in life. Uh, Wonderful, yeah. <laughs> fantastic, so um, inspiring, oh my gosh, inspiring, 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 we've got a lot of hummingbirds here, Mimi is like, oh, yes, other hummingbirds, oh, Sherry Dean, um, Sherry you've joined us, hello, welcome, she loves the analogy of the hummingbird, Yolanda as well, William says is the same, I just want to go back, there was a, um, a great comment here from Christelle, oh who said, um, it's not about shutting the door, it's about acknowledging that, that that's the end of a journey. Absolutely. I mean, um, mm -hmm. who you were and what you've learned and how you move forward, it, it, it's all within you. It, it's all the parts and elements of you. I think there is a time, though, when we almost do have to just shut the door because it's been so detrimental or negative or it's not been working for us. And in the process of that shift and moving away and discovering our source because the status quo let's face it the status quo still has a very powerful undertow it's still giving us this message of work hard get a good job no. suck it up yeah. to climb the corporate mm. ladder and 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 um doesn't look like anybody here we've you know you found your tribe laura and everybody's agreeing with you um there's wonderful hummingbirds all around Mimi has a question so the question is oh, sorry you... before her sorry wait mm. before her question i just wanted to say something with, with what crystal said is i definitely it's so just just on a personal journey is i definitely found like at first i was like that's it my corporate life i've shut the door and actually slowly with the business i'm building in singapore i'm bringing back the joy like i actually really nerded out last week and got excited on this excel spreadsheet again but <laughs> but, the point, <laughs> but, look, <laughs> but the point is I was doing it for something that now serves me joy and, and gives joy to others. So it has a different energy about it. Yes. Yes. That, that's and I think it. that's where it's the really, shift. Yes. So you've thought yeah. it through. You had to shut the door. Then you've opened the door and you've gone back to the cupboard or the closet or the corridor and yeah. taken what you've wanted from it, which yeah. is to, to Crystal's point. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. And yeah. look, we met because of that qualification, because you attended exactly. the Psych Woman and Leadership Court. We wouldn't be here having this. I mean, thank you for suffering. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm not for a minute. I mean, to be clear, I honor and value the importance of a degree, a qualification, working hard, climbing the corporate ladder, if that is what fits with you and if that's your source work. I am not here to say, you know, no, I honor and value that. It's each to their and own. So and much, finding so much their own. respect for that, it's, for, for people it's who know that, that is what they want to do. Exactly. It's the messaging mm -hmm. of, um, it's the overall messaging that, 
can send us in the wrong way because we're, you know, it's it's not this one size fits all. This is how, what we all have to do and work with it. Natalie Leach, thank you for joining us as well. So inspiring. I'm so glad that we've inspired you. You too are inspiring, Natalie. Um, so Mammy says, why did you move to Singapore? Well, it was for your, your, your husband's work. His Actually, career. My husband's work. Yes. So he's actually in a startup here in Singapore in digital transformation and strategy. And to be honest, I think, well, it's worked out beautifully for both of us. So he actually came over with a startup. And originally I came over literally just as a, a, it's called a dependence pass, wasn't allowed to work. And then we looked at ways of getting a permanent resident here to start a company that then employed me. And we've done all like made sure it's all legal in Singapore. Um, but actually, it wasn't me that moved. Um, although, funnily enough, usually I was the one who was always trying to move house and move places when I was so unhappy. And when I had finally just gone, whew, I'm comfortable with it myself, my husband went, got this great opportunity in Singapore. Do you want to go? <laughs> so I think it's fantastic. But it yes, has no, but now that really... I've shut the door and I've figured things out and I've done the work, I yeah. can go. But any earlier, it would have been like, oh, not the right time. So, exactly. Laura, thank so it's, you. It's been a thank beautiful you. opportunity. Beautiful opportunity. Absolutely. And I love uh, just Singapore. This, I mean, yeah, super cool, super cool, super amazing. Yeah, very exciting. So, um, thank you. Thank you for the journey that you've been on. Thank you for pushing through the things that were hard for you, um, being brave enough to acknowledge it's not working and taking the time out. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, not everybody gets the chance to have, you know, a sabbatical and, and travel to India. So what what really are we saying? We're, we're, we're kind of journeying with you and learning about your inspiring journey and where the dance of the hummingbird comes in, the hummingbird, and that's so beautiful. But it's acknowledging that if it's not working, it's okay. Yes. Going within, in whatever way that is, to figure out what could be better because there is a better if it's not working now what's the better look for the better what it, however and wherever and with whoever chase down the better and that can happen while you're still in the job but don't yes. wait until it gets to the point that you're like there's blood on the dance floor. That that revolution is like kicking you out. <laughs> like when the when you start hearing the muttering mutterings of the revolution, act, take some action, do something on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't wait for the blood. It's exhausting. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Revolutions don't have to. They can, they can be a quiet revolution. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, Laura, any any advice? So I think what I, I just want to sum up and say what we're saying is. You don't have to take a year out and go to India. You don't have yes. to have the what, what, what. This is your journey, and I love it, and it's beautiful, and it's inspiring. What advice would you want to share with somebody? What would you want to say just to end off? I would say take some time for yourself, even if it's just 10 minutes a day. And it sounds like a bit of a mindfulness speech, but it's actually more about just giving yourself time to breathe away from social media away from constantly the, the looking up to other people the i should be better other people have better lives literally just stop for a moment preferably in nature and just take a moment and add in 10 minutes a day maybe 15 start to just sit in stillness maybe with the journal but just <sighs> stop stop looking on the outside and, and and start just just being still with yourself it can be scary because sometimes we're like, wow, this mind is nuts. And we actually don't like being with ourselves. But I mm. promise you, there comes a time where it's just, it's it's beautiful. So that's, and then and then I think get hold of you because I think you, yeah, just, you've got <laughs> some good stuff. <laughs> just <laughs> listen, you like, uh, you, but uh, thank you. But it's the work that can, I think the big thing here is take the time. Know that it's not you at fault. Don't wait until you are broken before you take some action and do something with it. So and Lauren, don't wait for your external circumstances to change. To, because to, exactly, exactly. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Laura. Gosh, I could keep talking yeah. to you for the next two hours. But we're gonna, I think we're going to call it an end now. We're <laughs> really just going to do a Mahjong game in Singapore that yes. you've got to get back to. And thank you to everybody who joined us um, and spent time 
live talking to us. Um, fantastic, fantastic. I'm going to download the chat because I can on StreamYard because it's so, so many interesting things have been said here. And um, this discussion will be up on our profiles. We'll pin it to our profile. So if anybody didn't get to watch it live, we'll be able to um, keep that for a bit. But Laura, thank you. Thanks for your time. Oh, and enjoy the rest of your your weekend and your day and here's hey. to the dance of the hummingbird and and may that sweet nectar and dance continue to fill the air thank you thank you thank you thank you and thank you to everyone for listening and watching and to you lisa for the opportunity it's just uh, what a great chat it's I'm, cool. I'm, i've got inspired all over again <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> exactly our oh, job here is done it was just a... <laughs> so thank you everybody we're going to end off now um keep the, the keep the messages coming in the chat even though we end it's wonderful to see who's been here and who's been commenting and laura we'll see you on the other side <laughs> thank you bye thanks again bye bye bye, -bye.